मासिया क्या न कालीन पहले ही दालने कोड़े लिबिया और महादारु गलमो तो रखे ने वाह बेर कोड़े दस दस दिन ना आगे आता प्यार में बेर हुए लिबिया ने वाला लतरे कहने वो मिक्कली में नष्ट ला लंका वो मेरे मास के कालीन पास आने वाले वो देने पर पास आता रुआन द पास इतना कितने नलिये तेंदे पाव ये वाला तुम्हारे Anak tua guna, bukan pelajar orang. Naya yang anak tua ni mesti ada. Ensa, pelajar ni ni kira. Kali ni bukan sih, apa ber? Ekek time model, si mangga tu terang. Sama pun juga kau tu nol. Mereka baru baru tu terakhir dengan peluang kemak kembali dia nol. Ensa, ratus India lalu naya ke ni ke ni ni ni. Siapa hasil kalau nak melukai tu orang kali tu, oba mama juga tiba. Mereka ni mana sih dah? Lawat naya kat pelabuhan ni ni baru baru. Ekset jadi ni sangat dah ni baru, oba dah. एक्चुअली जाते हैं कि संविधान में परिसर में ऐसा धान में वो संधि लेकर में हर एक नुकसान होती है। यही विधायक अध्यक्ष का इंग एंडरसन मार्क में अधिकार से लेकर विशेष पंडुलिया निकट कोर्ट के लिए था। अभी तक ये विधायक धान नहीं मारते हैं। Ladies and gentlemen, following the address by the Secretary of the Ministry of Environment, Dr. Amit Jansen, the highlighting the importance of today, we now have the address by Ms. Inga Anderson, the Executive Director for the United Nations Environment Programme, who joins us virtually to share her message. Now in its 36th year, the Montreal Protocol on Substances that deplete the ozone layer has been fundamental to protecting human health and nature. This hugely successful agreement phased out 99% of ozone depleting substances, and the ozone layer is now healing. Millions of people and countless ecosystems have been spared the ravages of UV radiation. Less known, however, is how important this agreement has been and will be to climate action, because many ozone depleting substances were also climate warming gases, so phasing them out has slowed global warming. In fact, a 2023 study showed that the Montreal Protocol has postponed the first ice-free Arctic summer by up to 15 years by time for the onset of changes of our climate system, including positive consequences for ecosystems and communities depending on ice. Now, with its Kigali Amendment, the Montreal Protocol has an even bigger role to play in climate action and in sustainable development. As we have seen this year, heat waves are growing more intense and more common. In this searing heat, over one billion urban and rural poor lack cooling access. Their lives are in danger. To achieve the sustainable development goals on everything from health to education to energy access, we must bring cooling to these people without intensifying climate change. And that is a challenge to the Montreal Protocol, which it is facing head on through its Kigali Amendment. The amendment aims at phasing down hydrofluorocarbons, or HFCs, which are climate warming gases that are powerful and are widely used in the cooling industry. If HFC phase down is achieved, up to 0.5 degrees Celsius warming could be avoided by the end of this century. This, however, is only the beginning. This cooling equipment must be redesigned to become more sustainable, both in their use of climate-friendly refrigerants and energy-efficient features. By doing so, more people could access life-saving cooling without further warming the climate and potentially doubling the warming avoidance gains. Sustainable and energy-efficient cooling is on the agenda of the next climate summit, COP28, later this year. The Montreal Protocol Secretariat Unit will draw attention to the issue by organizing a pavilion with partners to influence decision makers. However, as the new climate records are set, we cannot afford to wait another day before acting. So, as we mark World Ozone Day, I call on governments and industry to work ever harder under the Kigali Amendment to phase down HFCs and make cooling equipment more energy efficient. Climate change is warming our world, and the Montreal Protocol can help keep it cool, but only if we back it 100%.